brings us to game number three. Anarchy versus Bongzu IM. The winner takes the match. Azir and Zed band again. Two bands that we've seen all series long to no one's surprise. And Anarchy, Azir, Nar, and LeBlanc in the first game when they had the blue side. Will they continue this trend? Kalista, Zed, Ari for Incredible Miracle when they had a red side in game one. So how's this going to shake out? Will be the Urgot ban. Mm -hmm. Once again, Azir, Urgot, Cassiopeia last game when the sides were reversed. Hmm. So will we see... Calista. Okay. Calista not getting through. So will Ari, yeah, the Ari ban last is what makes me curious. Are they that concerned? Because they didn't decide to take the LeBlanc away in the last game. They had the opportunity to first pick it and give the Callista yeah. over instead. They chose not to, and Mickey was able to pick up his first professional win in Korea on LeBlanc. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of dangerous to give Mickey that LeBlanc. Well, it's dangerous to give anybody LeBlanc, but Mickey seems to be quite capable of handling the champion. There is a Rek'Sai ban, very curious. Will they first pick the Gragas here if it's not banned out? Quite possibly. But you can force them into picking Gragas or picking LeBlanc first if you ban the Ari right now. And Frozen's a very good LeBlanc player himself, so he will be able to pick that up on the first there round of the draft. But they actually are going to take it out, which makes the Gragas pick, I feel, fairly solid here. Yeah. I Unless mean, they want to take Hecarim. True, true. Nar still open for Apple, but he wasn't really able to make that be a, a big part of the last game for too much. Anymore. Well, they did punish CV Max pretty well early, but they didn't transition that into split pushing where Apple could repeatedly put pressure onto CV Max, which is what you have to do if you build that frozen mallet first. It's definitely not as good for team fighting, so you really just want to prolong the laning phase with that item. True. And that's something that I am failed to do. See what this first pick is going to be. Anarchy taking a long time to decide this. I think you'd go with the Gragas. I would think so too. Lyra, that has been his best champion. Yeah. It's been making a big difference for a lot of teams lately. And they first picked the Gragas in the first game of this series as well. Yep. But they're going to take Lulu instead. Huh. Bit wow. of a surprise. Yeah, very surprising actually. Especially when in this series, the Lulu teams have been the ones that have lost so far. Uh, both huh. teams attempting a protect the AD carry composition and both teams failing and executing it. So you can take something like Alistair LeBlanc here or Alistair Gragas, or, but they're actually gonna let the LeBlanc go through. So that means oh. if Mickey picks the LeBlanc again, what will he, they play into it? He can't. Oh, LeBlanc is gone, excuse me. It's been a long night, guys. It's true. All right, so. Can pick a Moo Moo, though. Yeah, can pick a Moo Moo. So, but the Lulu has been a, a choice regardless against Assassins. And Cassiopeia available here for Frozen to grab once again. <laughs> the Cloud Templar trolling has begun. So, we're waiting yep. on this next pick to come through. We'll see what it ends up being. You know, for the insistence on banning Cassiopeia that Anarchy had in the last game, they're perfectly happy leaving it up here to be picked. It was picked last by IM in game one of this series. They're taking a long time to decide these, too. And right now, there's something up over our screen, so we can't actually see what's being picked. Oh, okay, it's going to be... Trundle Lissandra? What? Okay, there's got to be some sort of like bug. It sounds like there's yeah. a bug in the client right. where some we had to back out because there was a hard random that occurred. That's what you get when you troll Cloud Templar. <laughs> yep. Yeah, sounds like they had an issue with the draft phase and the client. We're just full of client issues tonight. Apparently we are. So people getting back into the game now so we can start this one up and get back into game three of this series. Yep. So the Lulu first pick, then the Gragas and the Alistar, picked by I am. And after that, who knows? We don't know. Uh, again, it does make me wonder because 
that Cassiopeia can be very valuable in this scenario. So just letting a player like Frozen have that seems unnecessary, unnecessarily dangerous to me. Yeah. And slowly, everyone right now trying to figure out their order in the lobby. It's not going well. It's not going well for Anarchy right now. They messed nope. it up several times already. It's Anarchy. Oh, still got it wrong. There we go. They finally got Nailed it. Nailed it. Because you have to join the lobby in like the proper order, you know? To move into the right spot on the screen. Because there's not like a swap button yeah. like there is in Champion Select. Now, you why there isn't, like, I don't know. Choose the spot. You have to just join in the proper order, you know? Advanced technology. Right. That's right. So it will be just Lulu, Alistair, Gragas, and then we're going to start with Lyra's pick on the blue side. Mm -hmm. So those picks haven't come through yet. So we wait for this lobby to be restarted. Yeah, we will see where things end up after that. So I don't know. What do you think you go with on this? I don't know. I, I'm just not a fan of the protect the AD carry compositions that we've seen with the Lulu so far executed by these teams. Mm. Neither one of them's figured out how to make it work. Doesn't seem to be that helpful uh, to actually pulling out wins right here when their team play, I don't feel, they don't group enough. They're, they're not tight enough in terms of their coordination to really pull this off. Yeah. So... Just going rapidly through the bands right now. Yep, making sure everything is banned the way it was. And Pick we're right back to where we were. There we go. Okay, finally. Okay, here we go. Funky music aside, it's time. Wow, they could be going for a very similar composition to the one they attempted to play in game one. Remember that Anarchy tried to play mid Lulu with Gragas, Jinx, Morgana, and Nautilus for a very CC heavy shieldy comp for Jinx. Didn't really work out that well for them. So I think it's smart of them to mix it up, add another damage threat here, and CV Max will be getting his Hecker in one more game. Yeah, Sejuani for Lyra as well, which will be a powerful pickup, of course. And I am. Um, I suppose they could go pretty hard in games. Well, they could, and also the Spell Shield helps to survive against this Hecarim. You can go for Sivir Nar here, or something like that, have a yeah. lot of turret diving potential, and then finish it off with a high damage mid laner like Cassiopeia. It still hasn't been taken. What about Sivir Thresh? Because you already know the top laner on the other side. Uh, well, I mean, you could, they already have the Alistair. Oh, yeah, you're right. So, top Alistair. I wish that was still a thing. But I think the Nar here is just uh, a great pickup against the Hecarim. You're going to take that when you can get it. Most teams ban Nar just to avoid that situation, but CB Max so apparently enthusiastic about playing into that matchup. And will we see the Jinx against the Sivir? Would be a nice lane matchup for the Jinx, at least in the first few levels, due to that range difference. You can push the Sivir out and harass her quite a bit. So we could see Jinx Thresh here. Or, or Jinx Nautilus, either yeah. way. Jinx Nautilus would make a lot of sense. A big front line for Jinx, some shields, a lot of stuff to help Song Yun get the damage done. Yeah, I like this composition better than I like the one in game one where it wasn't, we had the top Nautilus coming through. The Hecarim is just, so much better at threatening, and they could go for Juggermaw instead, but I think Jinx is gonna be the yep. preferred one, just because they know they have the Jinx Sivir matchup already. So there we go, Jinx and Nautilus make it through. And so the final pick over to IM, and we'll see what they decide to go with for their mid laner. Cassiopeia uh, is still open. May not be too bad. What do you think? I, I think Cassiopeia is a perfectly fine option here. Add some more damage to your composition. You've got the Gragas already, so that Cassiopeia's single target damage, you can chase people down with Twin Fangs pretty easily. I think they have a nice setup for Cassiopeia, so that's what it's going to be. Yep. All right, locked in for Frozen. 
I think this is going to be a lot better for them than in game one where they had the Rek'Sai with the Cassiopeia instead. Yeah. Just because you're able to pursue somebody so efficiently and really just use that Petrifying Gaze after the Grog Assault goes down, isolate somebody, chase them down, and that's it. Yeah, Plus, they have so much speed this time as well with the Sivir instead of the Corky. I think this composition makes a lot more sense than the similar, well, than the Cassiopeia comp that they ran in the first match. Well, Nara can just throw the entire team right into the Cassiopeia ultimate as well, too, so some pretty crazy combos you can get done with this. That is a really fun combo to watch. Yeah. I really like seeing that when we have had the Nars that toss everybody back to set it up for the Petrifying Gaze. So much engage from Incredible Miracle here. Anarchy, on the other hand, trying to disengage as much as possible. Not really, it's gonna be difficult for the Sekrim to get into the back line with the Sivir Spell Shield there, mitigating at least some of that devastating charge damage. That's right. And so here we go. Game three between Anarchy and Longzhu IM. IM looking for their first win of the season. And Anarchy looking to move to 2v2, or 2 and 2. 2v2. <laughs> 2. It's a long night. It's been a long night. All right. 2 and 2. Either way, it's going to be action packed. And it's time. Anarchy versus IM. Time to get in the game. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. CV Max and Anarchy trying to take down <laughs> Apple and Incredible Miracle. Fans not going anywhere. Well, the fans are going out on the map at the very least. Looks it's like true. we're not going to see the early invade to detect the lane swap if that was possible. This game, pretty deep invade in the last one. Everybody just playing it cool this time around, and uh, I have some choices to make. Whether they want to get this Jinx rolling, or whether they want to try and shut down this Hecarim up in the top side, because there's a distinct advantage for each team, depending on which side lane they prefer to get ahead, in terms of staying in standard lanes or in terms of lane swapping. Hmm. And here we go, just... Looks like, are we going to see that Gromp start from Ignar and Roar? They're pinging it right now. We haven't seen that in quite some time. It, well, if they're going to go into this 2v2, they may want that little extra edge, I suppose. Yeah, most, most Korean teams have stopped doing that recently, trying to get that XP bonus and really bully people out of lane early on. And I think part of that is that a lot of junglers have started level 2 ganking which means that if you try and go crazy in terms of forcing an advantage after hitting a fast level two, you could just get ganked in lane as the jungle just walks in and kills you. Right. So due to the, the rash of level two ganks that started happening around the time the qualifiers began, that has been a less popular option. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look like they took the ground though. No, they didn't. All right. Snowflower taking a lot of damage early on. Now, do you think they maybe just stood there and tried to, like, delay their entry to lane a little bit to oh. make it seem like they helped leash or something? Yeah, that's always a popular tactic if you're trying to obfuscate where your jungler is on the map. Makes sense. And Gragas will be making his way slowly down to this side, but not going to gank super uh -oh. early. Oh, that was very close. They almost got Ignar onto the Flame Chompers. That would have been a lot of damage onto that Alistar. Right after hitting level two as well. Yeah. So nice try. Blue buff will be taken by Tucson. Pushed up in the bottom lane, Anarchy. So there is potentially a, a ganking possibility here. Ward does go down in the river for them. Yep. And so we've got CV Max's Hecarim versus Apple's Nar yet again. See if it goes a bit better for Apple this time. It was going fine. It went well in the laning phase. Yeah, it last was going game. fine last game. It was just the decision making around Baron and things like that that really changed the pace of the game in a negative way for Ryan. Absolutely. Well, two sin here. Ooh, tricky. Coming in from behind. Yeah. So he 
Knows that that ward was in the river, and now he's going to wait for the prime opportunity. Instead, going through the dragon pit with the body slam, and they're still going. Level three for Song Yun and Snowflower, though, still not there. There it is, finally. Oh, he's coming in. A little bit late, though. Wow, he waited there for that a was, long time. That was so bizarre, man. He had, like, all the time in the world to come in and try to make something happen there. Now he's just going to get caught. Going in onto Song Yun, though, though. Song Yun takes a little bit of damage. Flame Choppers come in. In the end, Song Yun not needing to use any of his summoners to get out of that. However, that was a lot of damage out of Song Yun, who now has no mana and has Roar pushing back towards him. Used his potion already as well. So that actually did turn the lane around a little bit. That helped. Four Incredible Miracle as they're reversing that. And Tucson, try you can't do that dragon in level three no. anymore, buddy. Not that early, wow. Uh, if he gets a lot of help, but this is so risky. Look how low he is already. He could die in one more shot. <laughs> All right, well, Ignar gets there just in time. If Tucson gets hit once more, though, he's dead. Oh, no, he got a little bit of help back. Yeah, he, the Grog is passive helps. He also, yeah, that's about as close as it gets. Wow, okay. Well, brave. that was quite brave, but with Song Yun chunked out and with no mana, there was less of a chance of that happening. But still, that Lyra could have delayed it, but they probably could have backed off if Lyra had come in. Mm -hmm. A little risky, but it worked. Yep. That said, there is a, a pretty decent gold lead already for Anarchy. Coming from the top lane and well, the, the jungle. AD carry spot mostly. The jungle as well a little bit, yeah. Yeah, jungle as well. So uh, that did cost them pretty dearly. And Apple's had to play it back. Meanwhile, CV Max has been cleaning up in terms of CS, actually, even yeah. on this nerfed Hecarim. So Apple really not playing aggressively. Start Doran's shield this game. It seems happy just to farm with the boomerang. Tucson now making a play onto the mid lane, but... Mickey too fast, getting away with that whimsy. Yeah, pretty easy to get out of the way if you keep your distance from Gragas, I suppose, and he doesn't have level six. And so in the bot lane, Roar and Ignar have been pushed back a little bit. Oh, not so much anymore. Yeah, Max actually hitting level six first, so Apple really having a hard time in the lane this game. I guess so. Already down by 20 CS in six minutes. Now that's gonna be normalized just a little bit by this minion wave, but he's still going to be down by over 10. Yeah. Hmm. And the CV Max, like, no doubt, he is certainly an expert on Hecarim in the top lane. Yeah. I'm, I'm impressed with how confident he was just picking into this matchup. Yeah. Well, certainly, in the initial impressions, it looks like the confidence is paying off. Well, I'm not sure that early Dragon was worth it because they lost so much control over this game and that early gold deficit really does start to mount up, especially when it's sort of cross-map right here and Frozen's the only one who's really holding his own and it delaying your jungler so much as well combined with Tucson's very lengthy gank on the bottom side that didn't result in a kill. Well, the nice thing for I am is that Cassiopeia is certainly a champion that can come back and carry if uh, things go well in the mid lane. Oh, we saw that earlier tonight. Yes, With we Faker. did. Yep. <laughs> that was Faker. You get that advantage in the mid lane, and uh, you can quickly mow the enemy team down by yourself. Right. And that was Faker, but Frozen's a good Cassiopeia player, too. And he has played it probably longer than most of the other pros here in Korea. So Apple finally starting to come back in terms of CS, but CV Max just going to go harass him while he attempts to recall. That's very annoying. But he should still not have to use his TP on the way back, even if CV Max tries to push this out quickly because of the way the wave is positioned right now. Right. And he's gonna zip back to lane with the Ninja Tabi and the Home Guard enchant already complete. Hmm. Same build for CV Max. Seems pretty reasonable. I'm surprised oh, to see it on the NAR, actually. Surprised to see it on the NAR. Maybe uh, just really worried about 
having utility to pick up that second dragon rush, perhaps? Yeah, it's... And the main damage sources are attack damage on Anarchy as well, which does lead you to that itemization to prevent Jinx from getting resets on you also. But right. that said, you still probably want to be a little bit more punishing. Oh, Frozen's got up with the Twin Fangs now. Mickey taking quite a bit of damage, having to back off. But a very, a very passive game right now. Well, th third game of the series. Nobody wants to be the one to lose this one for their team. So if both teams are going to be scaling fine into the late game, so nobody really desperate to make ganks this early or get any particular lane ahead, playing as cautiously as possible and trying to build towards certain advantages. Now, when the dragon comes up again, Things could get interesting. You see the deep wards already going in. Great timing for Incredible Miracle because they may actually be able to take another dragon for free. Yeah, you can definitely tell that's what they want to do. And because this Jinx has to go back soon, I mean, neither AD carry has recalled yet in spite of the fact that we're nine minutes into this game. And so Jinx is going to take that opportunity now. So she'll be back in lane by the time the dragon spawns. Tucson wants a gank right here with Ignar, both level six. Yeah, uh -oh. they're gonna give it a try. Here we go. Mickey could be in a little bit of trouble or not. He's fine. Oh, you know, just sidestep it, no problem. You're just kidding. Uh -oh. And I am not wanting to commit to this a lot too, because they want to have that dragon. Looks like Frozen uses ult though. Yeah. Yeah, not sure. Oh, he used it onto Mickey right there, actually. I was wondering where that slow came from. I just didn't see the ult come in. Ah, I see. So that's not... I mean, it's a relatively short cooldown ultimate. It's not going to be up for the start of this dragon. Meanwhile, Roar goes back, picks up BF Sword and Pickaxe for the possible impending dragon fight. And looks like Ignar not going to be recalling right here. Some wards going in from Snowflower. Oh, here we go. So far, a little bit of trouble. Ignar jumps onto him, and that's a lot of damage over the wall from Frozen, poking him out pretty effectively. Yeah, that's very nice to get down early, but with the potions, he should be healed up in just a little bit. Speed Shrine already down. Four Incredible Miracle. Frozen skirting the sides. Doesn't want to get in range of that brush. Still no ultimate. Snowflower wow. getting caught out again. Yeah, Has to flash. Went into ward, and he's really getting punished for Tucson it. Tucson used his ult right there, though. Oh, Ignar's here. He missed his combo. Yeah. Well, a sloppy play there. Yeah, a little bit. Two missed abilities in terms of that combo and then the cask as well. Hmm. And in the end... That does give Anarchy a little bit of position over this Baron area. But doesn't look like they want to take advantage of it just yet. Well, it'd be hard, especially with the Snar Rage Bar building right now. Taking a fight immediately may cause them quite a few problems. Ignar did use his ultimate. Yep. So we've got a, a few ults down on the side of Incredible Miracle. Looks like they just want to wait him out until they are back up again. Meanwhile, everything available for Anarchy. And Roar is still starting to get what he can done. Whoa, action in the mid lane. Frozen getting really low. Frozen getting low again. Use that ult and again. Actually, on the hunt use as well, Anarchy has blown pretty much everything from Incredible Miracle. So they can absolutely make a Baron play right now, especially or a Dragon play rather, especially since Frozen had to recall. Yep, Lyra starts it. Anarchy just doing a good job of just being barely frightening enough for IM to have to use a lot well, of long cooldown ults. Anarchy or found ults a way, general. yeah, to you to make them use four ultimates. Only Nars available and send Frozen back to base. So that is more than enough. Wow. To take that second dragon of the game for free and now anarchy's evened up in that category as well as having that 1k gold lead coming through from the farm in this game more than anything else apple trying to get back to lane right now looks like he is perhaps not going to be going for the frozen mallet this game with that extra ruby crystal that could mean a warmog's armor or something like that which I would be surprised to see, but possibly, or he just had enough money for that and not enough money for the pickaxe. One of the big stories, too, is that uh, Mickey has been able to keep up in CS with Frozen. Like, we're not seeing that big lead that we saw from Faker's Cassiope earlier tonight. 
Yeah, well, I think in that case, it was a more of a more of an instance of Faker being Faker than anything else. I suppose. Also, it was a you know, different matchup versus the Ari as well, and that was an interesting time from Faker just yeah. getting the Merc Treads first. But Lulu, much stronger in the early game in terms of able to shield some of this damage and trade more efficiently with Cassiopeia. So, problem is the late game. So if Cassiopeia can go even here which wasn't the case in the first game of this series, then that the problem becomes, how do you stop Cassiopeia later? Yeah. So the shutdown on the Cassiopeia really hasn't happened. Not yet. Still a lot of action around the river, even though the dragon is long gone. Uh, trying to contest the blue buff right now. Making sure to keep the mid laners as safe as possible too, I suppose. So, I think Ignar may want to do something right here. He's sitting inside the tri brush and Tucson there for a little bit of backup, but they're going to not find much and just have to back off while that ward is cleared. So they tried to get a pick, and will they oh, get one? Maybe they do. Flash knockup onto Snowflower, and he is going to get taken out. That's first blood going to Tucson. Not bad. Ig Ignar used his flash to get underneath. With that pulverize, now more action up in the top lane as Apple tries to escape from Mickey and uh, CV Max. And it looks like he can. So success for IM, but, C but Apple might be getting dove here in a moment. Trying to get away, that's a lot of damage actually from Lear over time. Apple just one hop away from safety. Yep, there we go. And during that time period too, Frozen actually got a lot of tower damage down. Proxy farming going on in the bottom side. No one able to stop that after the pick onto Snowflower. So tons of turret damage taken and just a TP into the top side, make sure that the same thing doesn't happen to Apple's turret. But yeah. they're not going to quite finish the tower off. And when they do though, it'll be a huge gold swing in their favor and it'll probably be shortly before Dragon comes up again too. So it seems like they've got a pretty decent plan here for the next five to ten minutes or so. Yeah, they denied a lot of CS bot up too, so that yeah. actually gave Roar an advantage in that category. Yeah, not bad. And it looks like Anarchy is still concerned about trying to do something to Frozen, but Frozen's just staying so safe under that turret. Well, they want to keep chipping that turret down, which is something that Mickey has done a good job of keeping that pressure on and making sure that Frozen can't really defend his turret, so it will take a few hits over time. Right. It's inevitable, but he's done a lot of damage to Mickey's turret as well, too. And either way, it's good farm. Wow, where is Mickey going? He really wants to get this kill onto Apple. I don't know if they can do it through Meganar. Apple's ult is back up also. Yeah, it seems like it'd be kind of tough to burn through that with a Hecarim and a Lulu at this point in the game. Junglers so find each other there. Well, wow, I'm really surprised. So he's going to take out a pink ward. Green ward goes right back in, but he's lost control of the lane, and he's uh, looks like barely not going to take damage on his turret because Lyra comes there just to tank the minions with his face. Huh. Well, whatever works. Ignar in the meantime. Hiding in the brush. And it seems like... Seems like they've kind of identified Snowflower a little bit as a target that's fairly easy to pick, you know? Well, they uh, they had to wait for a while to get that one in the bottom side. Mm -hmm. And they keep trying to mess with Snowflower, it's true, but he's still going to be a Nautilus that isn't the easiest champion to take down. No. You want to go for the Jinx if you can find that opportunity. So Anarchy again starting to set up around this dragon. Good wards in. Yeah, they have such good wards. They really do a good job of keeping track of everything. And it, you know, you see other rookie teams just throw down a lot of wards and then just not use them, but it feels like Anarchy really does use that information that you gain from it too. Yeah, indeed they do. So, so a little bit of vision conflict here, but Sang Yoon is going to show up to lay in time, and this should be Roar going back and finally finishing that Infinity Edge before the next fight begins. Had the Avarice play just to stack up a little bit more gold. Well, 20 uh, seconds until yeah, Dragon, so they really do need it. There and go. the first turret goes down in favor of IM in the bot lane. 
Yeah, nice push. Sung Yoon had to go back just so he was ready for this next Oh, that's really bit of combat. Yeah, that's very nice indeed. Mickey too, so low in terms of mana, it looks like Anarchy not going to be able to do much of anything about this next dragon. So a lot of free dragons this game. Very few fights around the objectives as people get poked out before it could even really start. Yeah, I suppose you've got two teams that are just really good at doing damage from afar. So when you do that, you can kind of end the fight before it begins, I suppose. Okay, well, here we go. No one around in the vicinity. No jungler to take this out. Desperation Rocket from Jinx, just to see if they can get it with the splash damage after it hits a champion, not going to happen. And now, Mickey back to his mission of zoning Frozen out and taking this turret. Oh, here we go, Lyra, nice ult from Frozen though. Mickey gets pretty low, and Frozen turning around gets ulted though by Sejuani. Tucson comes in to try to make a play. Mickey, wow, Tucson got the kill there, and Frozen still up. Tucson still alive as well, amazingly. They got a couple kills, and I am cleaning up this fight. Wow, CV Max teleporting in and not finding an angle onto anything. Having to try to escape, but it looks like Ignar and Apple have him cut off. CV Max in a lot of trouble here. Tucson nearby, but he's too low health to participate, so it looks like it'll just be a couple kills there. Oh, Tucson comes back in. <laughs> Waited on that recall. It was a bold move, but in the end, that was five kills, or yeah. uh, four kills, rather, for IM. Just a pile of kills going over to Incredible Miracle right there, and that's uh, you know, that's a dangerous situation to be in. You come in, you think you have that pick onto Frozen, but if you start to get into that choke, Frozen has the opportunity to petrify and gaze, and Apple had a great position to TP on into that fight as well. And finally, looks like Apple, it was just an issue of money earlier, getting that extra Ruby Crystal, now has the pickaxe, and now actually completes the Frozen Mallet after picking up some money out of that fight. Yeah, it's gonna make him start to become a bit scary, too. We'll see how this lane goes against the Hecarim now. Okay, well, I am really just wants to keep pushing down towers at the moment, so they're going to swap their dual lane into the top side. Gnar will try and farm back towards his tier one tower, even with that frozen mallet that you would typically want an in the lane matchup against the Hecarim. They'll just push in with the Sivir instead. We know that mid lane turret is pretty low too, so Frozen can probably get that without too much effort at some point, or too much aid, rather. Alright, well, Roar and Ignar moving into the top lane. We'll see if they can push down that turret as quickly as they did in bot. Yeah. And Tucson just making his appearance known in there. Uh, fast pushing actually from Apple, so they really want to buckle down and put the pressure on so this Jinx gets out of the mid lane. Mm -hmm. Jinx in the mid lane right now to see if they can push hard enough to get mid turret. Looks like CV Max forced an ultimate out of Roar, even though he didn't have his Onslaught of Shadows available. So that's a pretty big takeaway. But nobody's to stop Apple right here. Jinx still walking the lane. So there's a potential problem avoided right there by Anarchy. Yep. Uh, either way, I am still definitely with the pressure of this game. They've got that 3k gold lead. But that turret's going to go down to the minions. Like one hit should do it. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Roar up in the top side where he took so much damage that he couldn't hold on to the tower. That was a bit odd. Maybe he just moved up a little bit too far when Hecarim was in a brush or something. Yeah, but you should be able to spell shield. At least Hecarim's devastating charge was going to do most of the damage. Now, the Trinity Force was already done. But even so, so Apple now back in top after a brief expedition hmm. into the bottom lane. That is going to put him right back against that Hecarim. I suppose now that the long lane is there, they don't want the AD carry quite in that same position. Yeah. Song, you're going to start trading a little bit and zoning him off the tower. Oh, here we go. CV Max gets caught by Tucson. Slow down a little bit. Ah, they trade alt for alt. Frozen was right there, too, so CV Max making the right decision to just get out with his Onslaught of Shadows. Yeah, one less two is going to have to deal with this. Nar in the top side, however. No one in bottom to stop the push. Roar backs off the tower, allows it to go down. Frozen feverishly clearing minions in the mid wave. Meanwhile, Apple 
lose or winning this battle rather now that he has the frozen mallet in top and is going towards that warden's mail so he wants to get this turret before the dragon comes up that's the idea and he probably can it doesn't look like there's going to be any defense coming in from cv max i mean cv max trying to get back as fast as he can but it's going to be a little bit too late yeah, smashing his face into the turret over and over again and that's where he'll back off picks up that local gold i am with that nice gold buffer right now of two and a half k as they start to set up or think about setting up for this dragon rather apple will have tp back up in time as will cv max well i've got a feeling things are about to blow wide open this game one way or another this next dragon is up in about a minute and even though I am has a little bit of a lead, we've shown they are quite capable of giving that up if the circumstances are correct. If Anarchy can catch them at enough Barons that perhaps they shouldn't be so eager to take. Yeah. Well, as is, I am. It's 30 seconds away from going for this third dragon. Yeah, setup's pretty good right now. Mickey in the bottom lane just pushing it forward, but don't really want to be flanking with a Lulu here. You have to stay with the rest of your team and with that Jinx so that you can actually get your ultimate and your shields down on the proper target. Meanwhile, CB Max actually having a good time with Apple right here. Oh, there's the Onslaught of Shadows. And Apple, can he get out of this? I don't know. No, Ignite wow. does it. CB Max wins the 1v1. And oh, that is him. definitely not supposed to happen when there's a frozen mallet onto Apple. He should never have been able to close the gap between the two champions in the first place. He doesn't have flash and he waited a long time, so I don't know how that happened. Well, either way, Anarchy going for this dragon. This would be their second. They tie it up, but Tucson comes in. Dragon still taken by Anarchy. And will I be able to get anything out of this? Tucson grabbed by Snowflower. Here comes CV Mac over the top. Frozen avoids most of it, but Roar getting chased down by this Hecarim. And meanwhile, Song Yoon gets taken out. Double kill for Frozen. So Frozen gets a triple before finally going down to Lyra. Looks like Tucson in a lot of trouble. Another kill for CV Max. Roar's still there, though. Oh, he turns right around. Roar's positioning gets him into trouble. Again, Apple coming in. He came back to life. He's got the teleport. And now CV Max finally in a little bit of trouble. Oh, but meanwhile, Lyra comes in and takes out Roar. Seriously? All right. Well, a lot of kills on both sides. That's just that's just how the series is, guys. That's just how it is. Just We've just come to is. accept it. Yep. That there are going to be a lot of deaths in these games. Frozen picking up that triple kill before he goes down. And then the cleanup teleport from Apple. Tusa tries to make the steal, but Lyra secures it anyway. Song Yun moving forward right here. And you can see him trying to get some of these rockets down from the outside. CV Max comes in, tries to deal with Roar, but can't quite take him. Meanwhile, Petrifying Gaze absolutely wrecks Song Yoon as Frozen moves forward through the team fight, gets the triple kill. And then here's Roar coming back around once again, having dealt with CV Max. And now it's going to be a 3v2 in the end as Apple revives, TPs, makes it there, and then helps to take out CV Max. Yep, and in the end of all that, we see uh, still about a 3,000 gold lead for IM, so that hasn't really changed. Anarchy got the dragon, though, so they're tied up on that. So the game's still very close. Could go either way. Yeah, although it is tilting more and more in favor of Incredible Miracle. Well, that Cassiopeia is starting to do a lot of damage. I mean, like we just saw, even though Frozen died in that fight, he still managed to take three people down with him, and all they need is Roar to have a little bit better positioning, I think, and those, those fights are going to go very much IM's way. There's the cask. Yep, throws Lyra right into Roar, and that's going to be an easy pickup for IM. Frozen gets the killing blow on that one. Oh, Ignar taking some poke from Mickey. And now, are we going to see the Baron attempt right here after the kill onto the enemy jungler? Nope, it's just the oh. bait. Oh, flash pulverize onto Mickey, gets knocked back in again. Great play by Ignar. Tucson with the kill. Snowflower on the run now. Yeah, Ignar saw the traps nice. go down and then reacted to it by not headbutting and instead just flashing over them to get the Q instead. Yeah. And now this will be a very fast Baron. I am looking to close this one. Yeah, they want to. They've got the Baron. They're going to turn. 
Ignar a little bit low, CV Max trying to cause some trouble. Frozen though, completely safe here as he walks his way out of the Baron pit, helping get kills along the way. And now the gold lead getting pretty high for I Am. And with that Baron buff, we'll see how many objectives they can take out of this. Yeah, they keep moving forward. Looks like they actually want to take towers with this Baron buff in this particular game after Unbelievable. struggling with that fact in game one. First oh. tower goes down, <laughs> another explosive cast, knocks Eevee Max into the wall. No follow-up, however, and they're just powering right on through. Yeah. Not really worried about anything Anarchy can do at the moment with that Baron buff, I am. Is bulldozing their way into the base. There's an inhibitor turret. Not wanting to push it any farther with everybody back up on Anarchy. That's probably a good idea. Yeah, just backing off and taking the edges where they can find them. Now they've expanded their lead to 9,000, so they should be very comfortable. Uh, the advantage that IM has, too, is that gold is very efficient, considering that armor is going to be really, really valuable against Anarchy's composition the longer this game goes on, uh, just because of the Hecarim and Jinx damage. And really, you're just trying to prevent those Jinx resets, and Lulu's there for the utility. So you don't have to be as worried. Meanwhile. Sivir and Cassiopeia, the very big threats on Incredible Miracle. Yep, that's right, and they're only going to keep getting bigger at this rate. Song Yoon, also playing a champion that can potentially get very, very big, but he's 0-2-2 right now. He's got the eye, he's got the static shiv, but that's really all the team has going for them. And that's not going to be a whole lot when these big armor items start to finish. Tucson on the cusp of completing that frozen heart. He only needs a couple more camps and he'll be able to grab that. Right. And with the Randuin's Omen already finished on Apple as well, it's not looking great for Anarchy, obviously, considering the Baron buff and the gold difference, but it's just those items are going to work so, so well. And here comes I Am. They want to take out this inhibitor if they can. And it's looking pretty likely, unless there's a big engage here. Oh, oh Song Yun gets caught by Tucson. A lot of damage out of them. They're going to go deep for it. Wild Growth keeps him alive for just a moment, though. But that's a kill for Roar in the end. Frozen knocked up, but still way out of the fight. And look at all of this damage coming in on a CV Max now. Wow, Frozen just tore him apart. And they can just keep going. Yeah, a double kill for Frozen now. Taking a little bit of turret damage. Taking a lot of turret damage. And they're just going to end. Yeah, it's going to be it. Lyra and Snowflower not able to do a lot to defend this one. Another knockup. Snowflower goes down, and I am after a pretty, pretty awkward game two. Get serious. Game three. They get what yeah. they need. They get Cassiopeia fed, and they get the win. GG. And they get a lot done in a very small amount of time with that Baron buff. Really yeah. looking a lot more decisive in that game than they did when they had to get a couple Barons in say. the first game of this series quickly closing out when they had the advantage. Where were those guys game two, huh? I don't know. But they finish off the night with a 2-1 victory, coming back off of that disappointing 0-2 against Jenner, but still looking like they need to tighten up their game pretty significantly if they want to compete with the big boys. Yeah, and you have to